It is a blast of summertime across the Bluegrass State. I'm tracking summertime, followed by a big blast of October air just ahead. We are learning more about the three men charged in connection to the shooting death of 15-year-old Trinity Gay. We'll have the latest on the investigation coming up. And four Lexington gas stations are robbed within 24 hours, all by someone wearing a clown mask. This is WKYT News at 4. Welcome to WKYT News at 4. Amber Philpot reporting. Temperatures are continuing to run on the very, very warm side this time of year. But if you are a fan of the mild weather, soak it up while you can the next couple of days because big time change is coming for us. Middle of the week. Let's check in now with Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey. Hello on this Monday. Hi, Amber. Hope you're doing well. And what's not to like about the weather out there today, huh? Gusty winds coming from the southwest. If you're a fan of summertime, it's working a little OT again. As we go into the middle of October, you got the beautiful fall colors showing up, gusty winds, and typically this time of year, when you get a big surge of 80s, it's going to be ahead of a strong cold front, and that's indeed what is coming down the road over the next few days. 83 Lexington winds gusting 17 miles an hour from the southwest. We've had gusts up to 25 miles per hour here at the station. Generally, it's uh, low 80s across much of central Kentucky, upper 70s, southeastern corner of the state. Warmer to our west, and that's the pattern we are in. Defender radar network, nothing up close and personal. So let's broaden out the view to show you how that flow is coming around that high pressure just off the outer banks of North Carolina. Southerly flow around here. Cold front to our west has a big push of chill coming in behind that. That will arrive as we get deep into the week. Yeah, not so much this evening. How about upper 60s right on through 9 and 11 o'clock this evening? The ACs are going to work a little overtime again tonight. Now, as we look ahead, we've got a big push of colder air coming on later this week. We've got a fall cold front on the way, and it's a biggie. We'll show you how much rain may fall and just what a dramatic drop in your thermometer to expect, Amber. The roller coaster seven day coming up in a few. All right, we'll see you in just a bit, Chris. Thank you. We continue to track the shocking and tragic death of 15 year old Trinity Gay. Gay, the daughter of Olympic sprinter and Kentucky native Tyson Gay, was shot and killed early yesterday morning outside Cookout, a restaurant on South Broadway in Lexington. A not guilty plea was entered for the three people charged in connection with Trinity's death this afternoon in court. Devonta Middlebrooks, Chazare Taylor, and his son, Demarcio Taylor, are each charged with wanton endangerment. WKY IT's Hillary Thornton has the latest on the investigation. It's our top story at four. Lexington police say they do not expect to make any other arrests in the case in addition to the three men who were arraigned here today inside of Fayette County District Court. 21-year-old Devonta Middlebrooks, 39-year-old Chazare Taylor and his son, 19-year-old Demarcio Taylor, all facing wanton endangerment charges. Middlebrooks also facing a charge of possession of a firearm by a convicted felon. According to their arrest citations, all three admitting to investigators that they fired shots in the restaurant parking lot early Sunday morning. Police say while they are not seeking any other suspects, the investigation is ongoing as detectives evaluate forensic evidence. The 19-year-old, the first arraigned today, his attorney entering a not guilty plea. The other two men not represented, asking for public defenders. The judge entering not guilty pleas on their behalf. Now, he spoke today to family of this standout student athlete from Lafayette High School, the place both her father and mother graduated. They say they appreciate the outpouring of support and that Trinity will be truly missed by all. They say the 15 year old touched so many people on so many different levels. And they're asking for continued prayers and privacy during this difficult time. The family adding that they are a family that believes in love and forgiveness, asking for prayers for the men accused and their families as they too are going through a tough time. And all three men will be in court for a preliminary hearing on October 25th. In Lexington, Hillary Thornton, WKYT. All three men declined our request for an interview from jail. Following in her father's footsteps, Trinity Gay was on the track team at Lafayette High School. Grief counselors, along with a therapy dog, were on hand at the school today, talking with students who needed additional support coping with the loss. Staff members say Trinity Gay was always pushing others to succeed in the classroom and on the track. We are proud of the legacy that she left. 
uh, and we are just heartbroken uh, that she's not in our building anymore. Uh, we're a different place today than we were 48 hours ago. Um, her loss is felt. Family and friends are planning a vigil to remember Trinity tonight. That vigil will follow tonight's freshman football game at Lafayette sometime around 8. Everyone is invited to attend and is encouraged to wear pink or purple. You can continue to follow the latest updates on this investigation at WKYT.com or on our app, which you can download for free from the app or Google Play stores. Trinity's death is one of two deadly shootings in Lexington over the weekend. The coroner says 27-year-old James Blair of Lexington died after being shot early Sunday morning. Police say he was shot in the parking garage of Chase Bank on East Main Street, but when they arrived, he was gone. Police say Blair later showed up at a nearby hospital before being rushed to UK Hospital where he died. Police say they have identified a person of interest in that case, but they have not released any other details. Just in, we have learned of a fifth robbery involving a man wearing a clown mask. The Mr. Money on Winchester Road was hit just this afternoon. Lexington police say a man in a clown mask has now robbed five gas stations in just two days. This morning, the shell near Man of War and Nicholasville Road was hit. Three other gas stations were robbed yesterday morning. Investigators believe a silver or gray Chevy Impala may be involved in those crimes. We're working on a number of other stories for you on WKYT starting at 430. Barbara Bailey joins us now from the newsroom with a look at some of the news in progress. Hello, Barb. Good afternoon, Amber. State police are investigating a death in McCreary County. A body was found at the base of a cliff on West 92 near Highway 1651 in the Stearns community. The discovery was made by a farm employee who was looking for loose cows. The Kentucky State Police is investigating. Right now, it hasn't been determined if the man died as a result of an accident or something else. A Bullitt County couple is recovering today after a violent robbery Sunday night by robbers posing as police officers. Deputies say three people armed and dressed in bullet resistant vests approached the home, identified themselves as officers, and burglarized the home. The Bullitt County Sheriff's Office says the trio fled in a stolen pickup. A chase ensued when the truck and a second vehicle, also believed to be involved, were located by police. 45-year-old Joseph Keene of Louisville was arrested after his vehicle crashed into a cable barrier, and he's now facing charges. Coming up on WKYT News at 5.30, we'll have the latest on the search for two other suspects. And that's a look at some of the news in progress. Amber, back to you. Barbara, thank you. Now to some stories making headlines across the nation at four. There are just 22 days until voters head to the ballot box, but with Donald Trump's plummeting poll numbers, he's trying a new tactic, arguing the election is rigged in favor of Hillary Clinton. Clinton, however, is also facing challenges as newly released emails from both the FBI and WikiLeaks could further damage her campaign. Diane Gallagher breaks down the latest from the campaign trail. The election is being rigged. Donald Trump ramping up his claims that the 2016 election is a scam. Rigged. It appears, at least to the GOP nominee, the only explanation for any dip in his poll numbers is a conspiracy to rig the results. So despite not providing any evidence, Trump continues to float the theory. It's rigged like you've never seen before. They're in tweets, chastising fellow Republicans for not taking his claims seriously, which has some Republicans pushing back. Country, that the system is not rigged. And even his running mate, Mike Pence, is trying to temper the stolen election rants. We will absolutely accept the results of the election. Meanwhile, WikiLeaks. Emails are once again causing concern for Hillary Clinton's campaign. The FBI dropping new documents Monday from its investigation into her State Department private server and WikiLeaks releasing thousands more of what it says are campaign chairman John Podesta's emails, including more transcripts from Clinton's paid speeches to Goldman Sachs. Now, the Clinton campaign has not confirmed or denied the authenticity of the messages and instead is focusing on blaming the Russian government for the hack. There does need to be a consequence when a foreign nation tries to destabilize an American election. Still, new polls have Trump keeping it close in battleground states, but CNN's poll of polls shows Clinton with an eight-point lead nationally going into Wednesday's debate. In Washington, I'm Diane Gallagher. 
You might want to start budgeting for higher heating bills this winter. That's ahead in Money Watch. And if you take a trip to Cuba, you can now stock up on cigars and rum. That's ahead on WKYT News at 4. Up with the latest news on WKYT.com. Join the conversation on Twitter and become a part of the WKYT Facebook family. Millions of dollars being released to Kentucky state colleges and universities today. That begins today's Money Watch. Governor Matt Bevin cut the money from the school's budget back in the spring, but Democratic Attorney General Andy Bashir sued, calling the cuts illegal. Last month, the state Supreme Court sided with Bashir. The Attorney General's office told us the governor and Bashir signed an order to release that money today. It is going to cost you more to heat your home this winter. Natural gas bills expected to go up 22% to an average. Average of $635. And heating oil bills get this to average almost $1,400. Blame higher fuel prices and a colder weather forecast. Macy's is bucking a retail trend and will remain open on Thanksgiving. Its stores are expected to open at 5 Thanksgiving Day, an hour earlier than last year. This year, several major retailers and shopping malls said they would close their doors for the holiday so their employees can celebrate with their families. Americans who travel to Cuba can now bring home as many as 100 cigars and several bottles of rum. The Obama administration has lifted the $100 limit, which could generate hundreds of millions of dollars. For Cubans. One caveat though, the rum and cigars brought back are only for personal use and cannot be sold. Your favorite wine is getting a makeover, and no glasses or corkscrews are necessary. Danielle Nottingham has the trend that's taking the pretension out of wine. Wine is rolling out a new look, and Andrew Jones of Field Recordings in Central California is one of the first winemakers to do it. Sounds like you're opening a beer. Yeah. <laughs> Jones started putting wine in cans back in 2013. Back then, it made up 5% of his business. Today, canned wine accounts for 40%. Why wine in a can? It's real simple. It's like simplicity. Um, you know, wine doesn't have to be so ceremonial. Canned wine currently makes up less than 1% of the market, but the growth has been explosive. Sales more than doubled over the last year from $6.4 million to $14.5 million. Sommelier Whitney Adams says wine in a can is portable, affordable, single serving, and a hit with millennials. I think that that's definitely the way that, that things are headed. Um, I think more and more, you know, every month or two, a new, a new wine comes out in a can. Single cans retail for as low as $5. At Field Recordings, it's about $8. Four packs and six packs are also available. It's not like you have to buy it that day and drink it that night. Can wine actually ages better than the bottles because there's no light hitting the product, so it keeps the product super fresh. Whether you want Pinot Noir or something bubbly, cheers. There's a variety in a can to quench the thirst of every wine lover. Danielle Nottingham, CBS News, Paso Robles, California. All of your medical needs under one roof. It's a place called Mission Lexington. They're celebrating 10 years in Lexington. We'll tell you more about it when we return here on WKYT. And we continue with a windy and a warm setup for at least another day and a half. But a major change ready to blow into the bluegrass state. Wait until you see the hour by hour temperature drop in just a moment. Now, your hour by hour forecast with Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey. Happy Monday, everybody. What is not to like about a day like this? Coming off a weekend that had some very, very nice weather. And here we roll into the brand new week. With temperatures borderline summertime. It, all right, it is summertime. At least it feels the part. Live look at our nine live sky cams. Obviously, they're live. We look across the entire region. Everybody with a sunshiny sky, gusty winds that are out there as well. And those temperatures that are low and middle 80s. Southwesterly flow, it's a strong one. High pressure across the southeastern seaboard. Low pressure out across the Plain States, right in between those two, you're going to get two things. You're going to get a lot of warm temperatures and a lot of gusty winds. And you can see how those streamlines are coming at us from the southwest. That front, by the way, will roll in here as we go into late Wednesday night, Thursday, and early Friday. And it's going to give us our best drink of water. 
maybe since August in some cases. How about that? Defender Radar Network, nothing. Going to stay kind of dry for the next day and a half or so. Upper 70s to low 80s, most of central and eastern Kentucky. Cooler in the southeast than we are to the west, where it's 85 across the Interstate 65 corridor. Tomorrow, middle 80s of possibility. Depends on if we can get a little cloud cover to develop. Nonetheless, 80 to 85 for most of central and eastern Kentucky. For playing along at home, record for Lexington's 87 degrees. Don't think we will get there. Low pressure out across parts of the Mississippi Valley as we go into late Wednesday. We're just going to skip tomorrow. Tomorrow's like today. You already know that. Warm air still out ahead of that. Could be a shower or thunderstorm. Look at all the cold stuff that is following this area of low pressure. That low will be right on top of the Ohio Valley on Thursday. Showers, thunderstorms will increase, sweep in here, and here comes the chill by second half of Thursday and into Friday. Friday's one of those days it'll start out awfully wet. We'll end it though with a definite chill in the air as that colder air comes in behind that storm that strengthens as it gets into parts of the New England states. That is a setup that can put down some decent rains. Into the region Thursday into Thursday night and early Friday. Look at that. Some areas, at least this model run says upwards of two inches into northeastern Kentucky. We'll tame that down a little bit, but I do expect some one inch amounts to show up into parts of central and eastern Kentucky. Now let's follow the temperature collapse. Wednesday into Thursday, front is right on top of the area. You can pick up that front six o'clock Thursday. 77 Prestonsburg, 60 Owensboro. Look what happens by Thursday evening. We're dropping it into the upper 50s. Watch your Friday temperature. 8 a.m., low 50s. It actually drops a little bit at noon. Noontime, upper 40s to around 50. And we stay in the 50s for a high. High school football fans in the 40s. 30s to begin your Saturday. 50s again on Saturday afternoon. Commonwealth Stadium bundle up on Saturday evening with temperatures mainly in the 40s. So a big chill is on the way for the end of the week. Into the weekend, and this pattern really flips around. Let's flip it around and send it to Officer Don for live drive traffic. Got a collision working on the inner loop of Man of War at Parker's Mill. It has one lane blocked there on Parker's Mill because of that crash. The collision at North Broadway and Fifth Street's been cleared inbound. North Broadway is back open. Drive time looks okay so far. Uh, we're holding our own to Nicholasville, Versailles, and Richmond. Now back to you in the studio. Officer Don, thank you. It is a state of the art facility that's been years in the making. Now, the Whitaker family YMCA is getting set for its grand opening. Deanne Stevens is out and about today with more. Hi, Deanne. Hey, good afternoon, guys. We are at the all new Whitaker family YMCA. And listen, we're giving you a sneak peek at what this magnificent place looks like. We're in the aquatic center area here, and it's just a gorgeous. Area. I said, when my kids see that slide, they're going to say, What are you opening, mom? David Martrano is with us, president and CEO here of YMCA Central Kentucky. David, you, when people walk in, I can only imagine the excitement. This looks like it's just all coming together beautifully. It's an absolutely beautiful facility. Certainly, this aquatic center, just all the different features and great atmosphere for kids and families and, and really all people within our community. You guys started construction on this last year, uh, around July, I think right. you said last summer. And when you see it all finally coming together, I can't imagine the people that are coming by here, stopping by. I drove up and I went, holy cow, it looks a little different now. Right, it's certainly a wonderful facility and a great community hub for this end of town. When you think about it, the Y's about a community hub and all the individuals and families and participants that we're going to have here at the Y is just fabulous. Specifically to the Aquatic Center. Show, give us a little quick tour here. Yeah, so here we have our, our, uh, our Whirlpool, our spa area, and it's uh, a beautiful spa area. And just on the other side, we have our steam and sauna. But really, the feature of this location is certainly our water slides and, and interactive features for our kids. We want to design a pool where you could have multiple programs all going on at one time. The YMCA, always about kids and families. Talk a bit about that and how so many memories are made at the Y's all across the country. Yeah, when you think about the Y, you think about families, you think about people participating together. Uh, the Y is a gathering place, a place where we're about strengthening our community, and certainly the Y has done that in every community across the country and certainly here in Lexington. Well, I understand it's not just the Aquatic Center. We haven't seen the rest yet, but coming up at 450, we are headed to the World Class Wellness Center that, from what you guys have shared, is just off the charts. We're going to give you a sneak peek of that. And know this, the grand opening for the public is in two weeks, two weeks from today, right? Weeks, yes. So what does that mean for them at home? 
So anybody can come to the Y today and get a tour of the facility and join at any given time, or if you want to do that online, you can do that at YMCACKY.org. Okay, two weeks. It is opening, and we are super excited about that. Stay tuned at 450. We're taking you to the Wellness Center. I'm Dean Stevens, out and about at the all-new Whitaker Family YMCA. Back to you guys. Deanne, thanks so much. Still ahead in Better Living, how foster care can cause problems in children. And which foods do Americans like to tweet about the most? Tomorrow night's Mega Millions jackpot is $20 million, and Wednesday night's Powerball jackpot is $136 million. It is time now for Better Living, health, education, and consumer news that impacts your life. A new study shows that children in foster care have more health problems. A new study in pediatrics suggests children placed in foster care were six times more likely to have behavioral problems and seven times more likely to be depressed. Doctors say early life experiences may play a role in the findings. Pepsi is reducing sugar from its drinks. The soda maker says that by 2025, its goal is to have at least two thirds of its drinks have 100 calories or fewer from added sugar. Pepsi will add more zero and low calorie options and also reformulate existing drinks. Scientists at the University of Utah looked at what Americans are tweeting about when it comes to food. Coffee came in first, followed by beer and then pizza. Communities posting positive tweets about healthy foods were more likely to be healthier overall. All right, let's head over to Chris for another check of this just absolutely perfect weather that we're experiencing. I don't think I've ever tweeted about food, by the way. Weather, sports, oh yeah, absolutely. You'll get your fair share of that at Kentucky weather. Uh, and on a day like this, we have absolutely gorgeous conditions. Tweet about this, folks. Get outside and enjoy this. Upper 70s to low 80s all across the entire region. 83 Lexington, 80. One London and the Moorhead area with a mix of sun and some clouds. But you notice on that Lexington cam, those winds are very, very gusty. Fall colors exploding right in front of us. Winds right now, by the way, uh, pushing 20, 25 miles per hour as some of those stronger gusts. We're talking about near records tomorrow and then a big change toward some chilly air. Maybe the coldest we've had so far this fall. An interesting seven day forecast in a bit on WKYT News at 4 30 that starts right now.